right, uh, loved ones, um, we thank the Lord this very day, this very hour, uh, for His mercy and for His grace. This is your pastor and then your prophet, uh, Diodu Henry Apiakran. And once again, I'm uh, here to share a very important uh, message with you. Uh, before I share this important message with you, let's pray. Our Lord, and our Master, our Heavenly Father, we bless your name, we give you all the glory. Holy Spirit, let this word bring forth understanding, bring forth revelation, and bring forth wisdom and power and true deliverance in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name, uh, we pray. Amen. So once again, uh, this is your pastor and your prophet, uh, Diodu Henry Apiakran. And I'm going to share this important message with you. I've entitled it, The Mysteries of Sexual Immorality and Sexual Purity. The Mysteries of Sexual Immorality and then Sexual Purity. I have shared, um, I think, several messages on my YouTube channel. When you go to YouTube, you check on my channel, Diodu Henry Apiakran. I've given some revelation about sexual immorality, sexual purity. I've written many books. I think one is called The Mysteries of Sexual Purity. Another book is called uh, The Mysteries of Sex and Purity. Another book is called, I think, um, many, many books I've written about sexual uh, purity and sexual immorality. When you check on my blog, uh, rockofheaven.com, www rockofheaven.com you can get my free books you can download them for better revelation and for more revelation so i'm going to expand uh, more revelation about uh, sexual immorality and then sexual purity and i believe that uh, this important and this short teachings is going to help you and empower you uh, to work in wisdom and to work in uh, power the reason why I want to share this important message with you is because uh, many people are in the pit of uh, fornication and they cannot come out. Many people are struggling in the pool of fornication, in the river of fornication, uh, in the sea of fornication, the ocean of fornication. They are in prison of fornication and they cannot come out. And when we say uh, fornication, it cuts around if you are not married and you involve yourself in sex people have different kind of sexual activity when people go into anal sex oral sex um uh, last in their mind people engage a male and a female they indulge in sex and god created sex for married man and a married woman is for um uh, matured people so in this uh time in this 21st century we can see that uh, immorality or sexual immorality has taken different kinds of forms. People watch on the porn, uh, you people watch on the internet, uh, on their mobile phones, on their computers, on their laptops, on their electronic devices. You see a male and a female, young children between 10 years, 20 years, uh, they are all engaged in immorality in schools in organizations, uh, in various places. Even you see a man, uh, an, an animal, you see a, a lady and an, an animal, a dog, they are all engaged uh, in immorality. You see a, a, a matured man with a young lady all going, doing all kind of immorality. A married man chasing another a woman. It, it all goes against uh, the word of God. So. I'm going to give you some revelations, some mysteries about sexual immorality and then some mysteries about sexual purity. And I believe that by the time I finish with these important teachings, uh, it's going to help you, it's going to empower you, it's going to be a biblical studies. It's going to be a biblical studies because uh, from a little research I've done, from a little um, discovery I've, I've done, I've researched into these things what i've learned is that uh according to research according to people who have learned they are saying that uh sex um involves your your five senses your sense of feelings sense of touch 
a sense of seeing um, it all casts around your five senses so when somebody is engaged uh, in um, immorality all these five senses are involved your sight your seeing your touch uh, your hearing uh, all these things are all involved when somebody is engaged uh, in immorality so you have to understand that uh, sex is not something that you can joke with it has spiritual consequences it has psychological consequences it has physical consequences so you have to know that um, God created sex for a married man and then for a married woman and you have not married you must not engage in it I know we are all tempted but by God's grace God has given us the real power and the grace and the Holy Spirit for us to sustain ourselves so you can contain yourself and the Bible talks uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 that for God hath not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness that is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 so these are the words of Paul the Apostle that as a Christian as a believer in Christ as a disciple of Jesus Christ as a Christian believer as a light of this world as a believer you must understand you must know that God have called us unto what unto holiness not unto uncleanness so it is part of our mandate that there are some Christians who say that we are under grace so we can do whatever we feel like do we know don't allow anybody to mislead you don't allow anybody to uh, indoctrinate you don't allow anybody to lead you astray that because we are under grace uh, we can do anything no the word of God does not teach us that the grace of God it brings salvation and the grace of God teach us to walk in holiness to walk in purity to walk uh, in understanding in Titus 2 verse 11 the Bible says that for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men teaching us that we must deny ungodliness and the worldly last we should live uh, in godliness uh, we should live in, in, in righteousness in purity and so as a child of God you have to understand that it is part of our mandate it is part of our Christian duty it is part of the Christian faith that we are called to walk in holiness to set ourselves apart for Jesus Christ to yield our body as a living sacrifice unto God so as a Christian believer as a child of God as a follower of Jesus Christ you must know that it is your mandate it is your responsibility to walk in purity and to walk in sanctification and to allow the Word of God to walk in the inward parts of you so when you get my book uh, the mysteries of uh, sexual purity I think I've given about over 70 uh, mysteries behind sexual purity. I've given over 90, I think 90 dangers of sexual immorality. And I've given, uh, about, I think, about 30 portals or some channels that leads to sexual immorality. And I'm giving some vital, over 30 keys, I think 40 keys, on how to uh, live in sexual purity. So uh, get a book, it's a free book. You can download it free on my blog on rockofheaven.com www.rockofheaven.com it's a free book or you can buy it on amazon it all goes in that way so this very day i am going to share with you about the mysteries of sexual immorality and then sexual purity the mysteries of sexual immorality and then sexual purity so I did mention that Apostle Paul wrote to the church uh, in Thessalonica in first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 that uh, God have not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness so as a child of God uh, sexual immorality or fornication uh, is a kind of sin that makes you unclean it's a kind of immorality it's a kind of sin that defiles you that defiles the temple of the Holy Ghost it's a kind of sin that can make your body not acceptable or not more uh, accepting in the sight of God. So as a Christian, as a believer, you must know that God has not called us unto uncleanness, but he has called us unto holiness. Now, in the same Bible, in the Grace Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 9, Apostle Paul wrote that, he said that I wrote unto you, 
in an epistle not to company with fornicators. You see how Paul the Apostle, the same Paul who wrote that we are under grace, is saying that if you are a fornicator, no Christian must work with you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses number 9, that nobody should accompany or nobody should work with fornicators. So if you are into the business, into the evil deeds, into this practice of fornication, then no Christian must work with you. Look at how strong Paul the Apostle write it, that nobody should work with fornicators. No Christian believer should work with fornicators because fornicators carries a kind of presence. I remember I have a vision. I was in a church meeting and the Lord opened my eyes. A lady came to sit in front of me in the church meeting. As the church was going on, this lady came to sit in front of me. The lady was sitting in between, let's say, 20 and 30 years. She was in her 20s. Now, when she sat in front of me, immediately the Holy Spirit opened my spiritual eyes. And I saw that babies were crying after this lady. And I saw in the I could sense in the spirit that the lady has a kind of smell in the realms of the spirit. In the realms of the spirit, what I saw was that I saw that a kind of uh, aroma, a kind of odor, like an ugly odor, a very disgraceful, disgraceful odor was following this lady and then the baby that she has aborted were crying after her in the realms of the spirit. And this lady was in the church, but in the realms of the spirit, she has a kind of a magnetic force that attracted a kind of last full spirit, a kind of demons that followed this lady into the church. And because of her abortions, I could see in the realms of the spirit that this lady has done several abortions. And because of her abortions, they were, and I could see that demons were following her. The babies that she has aborted were following her and because of that she has become a kind of a tool she has become a kind of a, a weapon for the enemy to use uh, to bring people into uh, the ocean or the river of fornication so there are some many ladies there are some many women there are some many guys around in the churches they are instrument of Satan and the enemy is using them to bring people into the kingdom of darkness Today we can see in our churches, we can see in our, uh, in our meetings, in our programs, in our congregations, in various places, most ladies, they dress like harlots. Most church, most Christian believers, the way they dress is like unbelievers. Why the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 that in like manner also that all women should adorn themselves with modest apparel. So as a lady, as a Christian believer, as a believer in Christ, you must know how to cover yourself, to cover your nakedness. But today, many ladies are dressing like the unbelievers. They expose their thighs, they expose their breasts, all in the form of fashion, in the form of um, grace, in the form of um, all kind of doctrine. So, child of God, you must understand that uh, sexual sin or sexual immorality, when we say sexual immorality, it's a sin that cuts around and one of the legal ground, one of the uh, loopholes, one of the channels through which sex takes place is that when you watch uh, porn videos, when you watch pornographic videos, you listen to uh, ungodly secular songs, you watch ungodly magazines, you read erotic books, all these things are channels that can lead uh, to immorality. So the Bible talks in the book of um, 1 Corinthians um, chapter uh, 5 verse 11 that but now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator you see how Paul the apostle say here mm, that I have written unto you not to company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such no one not to eat so you see how paul is saying that if you are a fornicator then nobody must eat with you 
These are the words of Paul the Apostle in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses number 15, that if you are involved in fornication, if you are sleeping with somebody, if you are sleeping with a dog, sleeping with an animal, sleeping with your sister, sleeping with your brother, with your mother, with your father, with your sibling, doing oral sex, uh, phone sex, using uh, sex machines, using robots, sex robots, uh, doing masturbation, all these things are part of the fornication lifestyle. And the Bible says, Paul is saying that what? Nobody must eat with you. Nobody must, must work with you if you are a fornicator. Which means that this sin, this fornication, is very, very, very deep. And today, it's very, very common in various places. I've had several visions of sin, uh, fornication, people going into all these things. A time is coming, if we don't take care, it is going to be like a public show where people will not even feel shy of fornicating in public places, in public buses, in public centers, in classrooms, uh, in organization, uh, in business centers, in uh, your boss's room, the secretary room, the boss is sleeping with her secretary, the manager with her secretary, employees with the employers, all in the form of fornication, and it is abounding, all because people do not know the danger of fornication. If you know the danger of fornication, I believe that you think twice before you go into it. And you must know that I explained that fornication or immorality, sexual immorality, has um, spiritual implication. It has spiritual dangers. And so you must know all these things at your fingertips. Now, before I dive deeper into these things, I want you to know uh, in the Old Testament what God spoke about immorality, what God Almighty gave to Moses about sexual immorality. I am not taking you to the laws, no. I am trying to let you understand that what God saw or what God revealed about sexual immorality under the Old Covenant and people who did those things, what happened to them, which will let you understand that how God uh, visualize, how God see, or how God analyze immorality. So when you go to the book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse number 10, the Bible declares that, and the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. So you get a key concept here that if you are involved in adultery, if you are involved in fornication, if you are married and then you go and sleep with somebody's husband, with someone's wife, the penalty was death. They are going to what? They are going to put you to death. That is Leviticus chapter 20, verses number 10. That the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery, with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteresses shall surely be put to death. So you see how God gave the punishment for sexual immorality that the culprit, the victims, those involved in this wicked act, those involved in this immorality, those involved in adultery, those involved in fornication, they must be put to death. So God saw that Fornication was a very great sin in the sight of his presence. If you go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 11, the Bible says that, And the man that lied with his father's wife have uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So you see how the Bible talks here. If a man sleep with his father's wife, both of oh, uh, the man and then that person will be put to death both the child and then that woman they will be put to death so you get to understand that God sees fornication God sees adultery God sees sexual immorality as a sin that is not acceptable it's a sin that is hated it's a sin that goes against his 
is aligned purposes. So, child of God, you can see in the Old Testament, you can see in the Old Covenant that the, 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 the penalty, the penalty or the reward, the wages for sexual immorality was death. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 12, the Bible says, And if any man lied with his daughter in law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have wrought confusion, their blood shall be upon them. So, another death penalty for this sexual immorality. And 13 says that if a man also lied with mankind, as he lied with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Verse 14 of Leviticus chapter 20. If any man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burnt with fire. Both he and they, there, hallelujah, child of God. Get a key concept here. That people are burnt alive. Human beings are burnt alive because of fornication. Imagine sometimes you are cooking and then just a fire just drop on your hand or on your leg. Look at how painful it is. But here, the laws are saying that if a man, mm, if a man take a wife and her mother, mm, it is wickedness. They shall be burnt with fire. They shall perish in fire. They are going to put a blaze on the fire, which means that this sin is very grievous sin. Hallelujah. So, child of God, you have to understand that it goes against the word of God. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 15, the Bible says, And if a man lied with a beast, he shall surely be put to death. Mm? If a man lied with a slave dog, if a man sleep with a beast, he shall surely be put to death and ye shall slay the beast. So if a human being sleep with an animal, today we can see people sleeping with dogs, with goats, with snakes, with horses, with all kind of animals. And even today, they are projecting this on the internet. You see a human being, a lady, a mature woman, a young lady, allow a dog to sleep with her. And it is abomination in the sight of God. And in the Old Testament, such people were killed. They were stoned to death, both the animal and the human being. But today, you see a man will catch a dog, sleep with a dog. A man will catch a goat, sleep with a goat. A man will catch a snake, sleep with a snake. A man will catch a, a, a cock, a chicken, a hen. They will sleep with the animal and they don't care because they, they, they don't think that it's a sin. They think we are under grace. But meanwhile, under the covenant, such people were killed. Such people were killed. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 16, the Bible declares that, And if a woman approach unto any beast, and lie down thereunto, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall be surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. So you see how the Bible takes it. If a woman sleep with an animal, if a woman fornicate, if a woman sleep with an animal, both the woman and then the animal, they must be killed. So you must understand that it goes against the word of God. God sees this sin as very dangerous. So the penalty, the reward for this sin is what? Is death. If you go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 17, the Bible says, And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing. They shall be cut off in the sight of their people, for he have uncovered his sister's nakedness, he shall bear his iniquity. Verse 18 says that, And if a man shall lie with a woman, having her sickness, and shall uncover her nakedness, he have discovered her fountain, and she have uncovered the fountain of her blood, and both of them shall be cut off from among their people. The ninety says, And thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, nor of thy father's sister, for he uncovered his near skin, 
they shall bear their iniquity. Verse 20 says that, And if a man shall lie with his, un- with his uncle's sister, he hath uncovered his uncle's nakedness, they shall bear their sin, and they shall be childless. 21 says that, And if a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing, he hath uncovered his brother's nakedness, they shall be childless. So you see, child of God, if you take the laws in Leviticus chapter 20, when you read from the verse um uh, uh the verse 10 to down to the verse um 20 21 you get to understand that these are the way that god almighty gave to moses uh, about the laws about immorality about sexual sin and most of the reward or most of the penalty were was death and sometimes they were cut off from among the people so child of god you get to understand that the danger of immorality that people today of our 21st century that we can see in our time that is rampant and it's normal the Bible says normal child of God is a grave evil in the sight of God when you go to Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse number 22 Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse number 22 the Bible says and if a man be found lying with a woman married to an unhusband then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman so shall be put away uh, from Israel. Hallelujah. So child of God, get to understand that in the Old Testament, that if a man is found lying with a woman or sleeping with a woman, both the man and then the, 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 the woman or the husband, the adulterer, the adulteress, the fornicator, all these people are put to death. They are stoned to death. They are burnt with fire. So, child of God, these are some of the things that you must know about immorality that today people are trying to normalize fornication that, oh, it is part of life, it is part of this, that, human rights. All these are ungodly human rights. It goes against the word of God. So, child of God, get to understand that Fornication is a sin against the word of God. And it defiles the temple of God, it defiles the Holy Spirit, it defiles your body, it makes your soul um, uh, lose its morality, it makes you lose conscience, it makes you walk in, uh, 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 in ignorance, it makes you walk in, in curses. It does meet in your life, a child of God. You must know this thing. Now, let's come to the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 3 Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 3 these are the words of Paul the Apostle he said that but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be one's name among you as become a saint so these are the words of Paul the Apostle that fornication and all uncleanness must not be named among you when you become a child of God when you become a Christian believer, we must not identify you with fornication. We must not identify you with uh, adultery. We must not identify you with uncleanness. We must not identify you with all these grievous sins because it is a requirement, it is a criteria, it's a mandate, it's a kingdom principle, it's a light. It's a fellowship, it's a principle, it's a kingdom lifestyle that's a Christian believer you must walk in. You are a child of God, you belong to the kingdom of God, you are part of God's children, you are the light of this world. You must separate yourself out of this world and then be unique unto God because if the unbelievers are fornicating, you can't fornicate with them because the unbelievers don't know God. But you have the Holy Spirit inside you, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He is a spirit of purity. He is a spirit of cleanness. He is a spirit of holiness. And He lives inside you. So you cannot defile that temple and still maintain the, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So child of God, the Bible says about fornication and all uncleanness. Ephesians 5 verse 3 that it must not be named once among you when you become a saint, when you become a child of God. When you go to Jude chapter 1, verse number 7, the Bible says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah 
and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So you see, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were into gay, man to man, woman to woman, sodomy, fornication, and because of their wickedness, because of their sodomy lifestyle, because of the gay practice, because of the lesbian practice, they we have what we call LGBT. I think it's called uh, LGBT lesbian, uh, L stands for lesbian, uh, J stands for I think gay, uh, for bestiality, uh, what they call it, transgenderism, uh, whatever they call it. People feel like they are like human, they are like, man will say, I feel like I'm a woman. So she goes, he goes to the hospital and then they will try to change his um, systems or his organs. A man will feel like I'm a lady and then she will dress like a lady. Then they will go to the hospital, they will pray on that man. She begin to get breast, begin to get some kind of, all kind of body parts. And it goes that way. A lady too say, I feel like I'm a man. So you go to the hospital and they will change his reproductive organs and it all goes that way. It's a kind of deception of this age. It's a deception of the enemy and today people are fighting for their rights. They are gays, they are lesbians, they are fighting for their rights. They are saying that, oh, it is my right to be a lesbian. It's my right to be a gay. It's my right to be uh, this, that. It's my right to abort babies. All these things are deception of the enemy. And today, we are allowing the enemy to take ground in our life because we are not praying. We are not preaching the gospel. We are not letting them know the word of God because the enemy is a deceiver. The enemy is a liar. So, child of God, don't allow anybody to deceive you that uh, you can fornicate, that you can't. Uh, do abortion, that you can uh, masturbate, that you can do this, it has spiritual consequences. And uh, when you get my book, The Mysteries of Sexual uh, Purity, and my other books, my free books out there, I've written into revelation, into more profound wisdom keys to get you understand. So, child of God, you have to understand that in Sodom and Gomorrah, people perish. The Lord rained his anger upon that city, upon that town, upon that uh, neighborhood. The Lord rained fire upon that place and the people perished in fire because of their sodomy. Even at that time, they did not even have the Bible. Mm? They did not have the written Bible as we have today. Which means that in our era, the anger of God, the wrath of God is going to be more terrible than those of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because in our time, we have the written word. We have the Holy Ghost with us, in us, working with us. But still, people are still indulging. People are still committing. People are still into the act of fornication. And child of God, if God could rain his anger upon Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sodomy, because of their uh, fornication, because of the gay lifestyle, the lesbianism, and all the bestiality and all whatever they call it, then God will also not spare those who are involved in this evil act. Don't use the grace of God as a license to sin. The Bible says that for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that we must deny ungodliness and worldly lust, which must live soberly, righteously, godly uh, in this present world. Titus 2 verse 11 to number 12. So, child of God, don't use the grace of God as a light to sin. It's the grace of God that grants us the liberty, the strength, the power, and then uh, the, the, the fire to serve the Lord uh, in, in holiness. So, child of God, it goes that way. When you come to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. So, as a Christian, we are called to sanctify ourselves. And how do you sanctify yourself? You can sanctify yourself through the Word of God. 
through obedience of the word of God, through reading the word of God, having time for the word of God, meditating on the word of God because the word of God can surely set you free. The Bible says that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall surely set you free. And the word of God has the inner power to build you, to build your spirit, to transform you, to walk in the light of the gospel. So the Bible says that for it is the will of God that even in our sanctification we must abstain from fornication. So in your purity lifestyle, in your sanctification lifestyle, in the righteousness lifestyle, in the kingdom lifestyle, it is our mandate, it is our duty as a Christian believer to abstain from fornication, to abstain from sexual immorality, to abstain from adultery, to abstain from uh, sex toys, to abstain from masturbation, to abstain from lesbianism, gayism, the transgenderism, to abstain from the oral sex, the phone sex, mm, to abstain from all these things because it is your mandate, it's your kingdom principle. These are not legalistic rules, these are kingdom principles, these are kingdom teachings, these are biblical teachings to help you walk with the Holy Spirit. So child of God, it is the will of God that in your sanctification that you must abstain from fornication in First Thessalonians 4 verse number 3. When we come to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse number 8, 1 Corinthians 10 verse number 8, the Bible says, Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand so just because of fornication over mm, over twenty three thousand one day three and then twenty thousand people fell down because of fornication because of adultery mm, three and then twenty thousand people so when he said three and then twenty thousand people it's a large number of people that died they perished they were destroyed by the anger of God, by the wrath of God. They were destroyed in their wickedness. They were destroyed because of fornication. They, 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 they perished in the sight of God. They became two for the enemy. They perished by the weapons of the enemy because of fornication. So child of God, if you don't want to be destroyed, then you must abstain from fornication. There are people who marriage have been destroyed. People who were into school and today they are now school dropout because of fornication. Many marriages are being broken. There are many marriages they are not standing right now. They are broken because of fornication, because of adultery. People are having babies, they cannot control themselves, and because of that, they are school dropout. People are having all kinds of um, diseases HIV, AIDS. Gonorrhea, syphilis, uh, HPV, human papilloma virus, all these diseases are in line with immorality and it can affect you psychologically, it can affect you mentally, the trauma that you go through, the shame, uh, the, 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 the injustice, the inferiority, all things is going to be a kind of tool the enemy will use against you. So, child of God, you must understand that the danger within fornication can limit you, can uh, destabilize you, can program you, can even cut your self-wealth, can even put a kind of disgrace upon you, can even limit you in your progress. So, child of God, you must understand that people fell, people died because of fornication. People perish in because of fornication. People die in, 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 in a very disturbing state because of fornication, because of adultery. As you can see in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 8, that people fell, people died, people perish because of fornication. When you go to Matthew chapter 19, verse number 9, Matthew chapter 19, verse number 9, the Bible says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, 
except it be fornication, and shall marry another committed adultery. And whoso married her which is put away doth commit adultery. So you get to understand that Jesus knew that one of the ways that can bring marriage divorce, that can bring separation, one of the most one evil sin or one evil deed that can give the, the legal ground for marriage divorce is fornication. Why didn't God say stealing? Why didn't God say lying? Why didn't God say um, insulting? But they say that upon fornication, someone can divorce. Upon fornication, someone can decide to break up the marriage because when you are married, you are joined together in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. When you are married, you have made a covenant with that person in the realms of the spirit. So when you go over your husband, when you cross the boundary as a married man, as a married woman, and you go ahead and sleep with somebody's husband, with somebody who is not your wife, you have defiled the marriage bed. You have broken the covenant. You have allowed another spirit to come and intervene in your marriage. So upon this premises, there can be a marriage breakout. So child of God, fornication can give the legal ground, can give the biblical ground, the spiritual ground for people to break marriages. In Matthew chapter 19, verse number 9. And when you go to Mark chapter 7, verse 21, the Bible says, from, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceeded evil thought, adulteries, fornications, murders, and it goes in that way. There are some people who say that, oh, it is the devil who pushed me to fornicate, it is the devil who did this. All the time you are blaming the devil, all the time you are blaming the devil. You are blaming Satan, you are blaming demons, but which mean why? The Bible says that from within, out of the heart of men, that fornication emanates. Out of the soul, out of your passion, out of your desire that fornication, adultery, lustful thought emanates. So you can't accuse the devil that although sometimes the devil can sometimes push you, but the, the main uh, portal, the main ground, the main channel that the enemy or the main uh, loophole that people use or people stand upon to fornicate is from the heart, is from the mind, is from the soul, from the emotions, from your desire. So you must understand that the root cause or the root uh, 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 um, channel for fornication is the heart. So if you can do with your heart what you allow into your mind, what you allow into your soul, the videos you watch, the music you're listening to, the friends you allow in your corners, the books that you read, all these things are channels that can connect with your heart. So if you can do with your heart, if you can do with the gates, if you can do with the channels that allows fornication to grow in you, then you can dominate fornication. And it's a real path, it's a real desire, it's a real power that the Holy Ghost has given you that real power to say no, like Joseph. See in the Bible, when Joseph was in Potiphar's uh, house, uh, this lady, this woman, uh, according to the Bible, she was trying to lure Joseph into fornication. But you know something? Joseph resisted this lady's um, temptation. Joseph said, how can I commit such a wickedness against my God and against my master? So even though the woman was trying to push Joseph to fornicate with her, Joseph used his willpower to, 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 what? to disengage from that fornication. So sometimes you must understand that fornication emanates. Fornication spring forth from the heart. So you can say no when you are tempted by a lady. You can say no. You can run away. You must flee from it because it emanates from 
the heart. It emanates from your conscience. It emanates from your soul, from the inner part of you. So don't blame the devil. Don't blame demons. Don't blame witches that they are the ones pushing it for the kids. It is your own mind. It's your own desire that is pushing you to go and then for the kids. So deal with your mind. Deal with the books you read. Deal with the songs you listen to. Deal with the things you allow into your, into your life. You have a phone, you have many porn videos, you have pornographic videos, you have erotic videos, selective videos on your phone. How do you expect fornication to leave you if you are allowing all this music, all these songs, all these videos into you? Definitely, when you watch a pornographic video, when you watch a porn video, definitely you'll be tempted. And there are some demons who are attached to these porn videos. The Holy Ghost has revealed to me that uh, I remember I had a vision where I saw that if uh, you watch a porn video, I, I used to watch porn videos, but by God's grace, I've stopped watching those things. I used to watch porn videos. I used to watch these porn videos on my phone, on my laptop, on my computer. But nowadays, I've stopped it. So sometimes you watch these videos and you are tempted to masturbate. You watch these videos, you are tempted to, uh, to, uh, to go and fornicate. So you must understand that there are some spirit attached to it. What the Holy Ghost will do to me is that there are some demons attached to these videos. The more that you watch it, the demons are transferred from those uh, channels, from those videos. It's like an, an energy that invites demons to come into that place. The more that you are watching these videos, it attracts the demons of lust. It attracts the demons of fornication, the demons of adultery, the demons of lesbian, the demons of gay, the demons of right. The more that you watch these porn videos, that you listen to this seductic music, this ungodly secular music, these uh, magazines that you have been watching, these pictures you have been watching, the more that you watch, the more that you listen to it, it's a magnet that attracts demons into your presence. So child of God, you must understand that you must do with the heart. If you do with the heart and the channels, it can help you override these things. Now when you go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 15, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 15, the Bible says that, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. So you see how Paul the Apostle put that our bodies are the members of Christ. If you are a Christian, your body, your spirit, your soul is joined to the Holy Spirit. You are now part of Jesus Christ. So you cannot take that member of yours, you cannot take that body of yours and then join it with a harlot, with a womanizer, with a prostitute because you are one with the Holy Spirit. Now, insisting, opposed to Paul says that, what? Know ye not that which is joined to an harlot is one body, for two seed he shall go on. So, when you join with a harlot, when you sleep with a, a prostitute, a womanizer, somebody who is not your wife, who is not your husband, you become one with a person. In the spirit, in the soul, in the body, there is a soul tower. There is a soul joy. It's like you make a partnership with that person. When you sleep with somebody through sexual intercourse, whether it be oral sex, whether it be whatever you call it, when you sleep with somebody, in the realms of the spirit, your soul and that soul has become one. You have made a covenant with that person. You have made what? A contract with that person. You have joined your soul. You have joined your spirit. You have joined your body with that person. So child of God, you must understand that the Bible is that what know ye know that that was a joint on her Lord it's one body. So the Bible says that if you join yourself with a harlot, with somebody, with a prostitute, with a womanizer, you have become one with a person. So if the person carries about 5,000 demons, about 10,000 demons, about 100 million demons, 
as soon as you sleep with that person, the demons in that person can also get access to you because you have become one with the person. That is why sometimes somebody can sleep with uh, someone and just after the um, sex or after the activity, the person misbehave. If let's say that person, the person can be a demon of anger, a demon of fear, a demon of um, wickedness, a demon of murder. As soon as you sleep with that person, that same demon begins to torment and to possess you. You begin to become more murderous, more wicked, more fearful, because the demon has get access to you. It is a spiritual transaction that you must know. It's a spiritual key that you must know that you become one with the person, you join with the person, your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, your desire, everything about you has become one with the person. So you must understand that immorality, when you join with somebody, is a biblical truth. It's a biblical word in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 to number uh, 20. Now in verse 17, the Bible says that, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Mm. The 18 says, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Mm. So the Bible says that we must flee fornication. Sometimes in most of the Bible scriptures, there are some saying that you must not do, but for fornication, you must flee. When we say flee, flee means that you escape for your life. For example, let's say you are in a community and then a lion appears in that place. Whatever you can do to disappear from that arena, you have to flee. We call it flee. Like you run away, you escape. You, 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 you try to live for your life. You try to save your life. So when it comes to fornication, the Bible says flee fornication. Never say that, uh, don't say that flee, run away, escape for your life because fornication is coming. You must save your soul because fornication is coming. You must jump from that roof because fornication is coming. You must depart from that room because fornication is coming because fornication can lead to premature death and when you read the book of proverbs the bible says that there is a woman called the strange woman and in her path is the way of death and people that follow her are on their way to the mortuary are on their way to the cemetery on their way to their deathbed and anybody that follows this lady is going to die and fornication is a sin that opens the portal for premature death to happen in people's life people are in the cemetery people are in their deathbed people are in the hospital people are in the psychiatric hospital people are in the graveyard because of fornication people are killed in fornication people are murdered people are shot in fornication all these things are involved so child of God, you must understand that the Bible says that we must flee from fornication. We must flee from fornication in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. So there are some sin that when you do, it does not touch the body, but for fornication, when you do it, you sin against your own body. You defile the body. Are you getting it? You defile the temple of the Holy Ghost. It is like um, a virgin who has not been touched. As soon as somebody sleeps with a virgin, from the research I learned is that when a lady breaks her virginity, from research I learned that when a lady breaks her virginity, there is a blood that comes out from a hymen. 
and God in his own wisdom allowed that blood to come out because the blood that comes out there is a symbol of covenant so when a virgin breaks her virginity the blood that comes out from that place is a symbol that she has broken that ground she has broken that parcel she has broken that virtue and therefore any man who broke that virginity any man who slept with her has made a covenant with her any man or any person that broke her virginity she has made a covenant with her in the realms of the spirit so you must understand that sex that people are saying that oh it is this it is that it is this is that you know you must not play with it you must not joke with it you must not allow anyone to deceive you that it is this it is that no you must think twice you must know the dangers and you must know how it goes if you are married fine for that one you are legally married and for that one god knows that you are married so he can do it but if you are not married if you are not married child of god then you must disengage from it if you are are doing that you must repent from it i get it if you are doing that you must what you must repent from it because the bible says that uh we must flee from fornication when it comes to first corinthians 6 19 the bible says, what know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have god and ye are not of your own so your body does not belong to you the holy spirit lives in you jesus christ has bought you with his precious blood you can't say it is my own body i can choose to do whatever i feel like it no child of god doesn't go in that way it doesn't go in that way jesus christ the anointed savior has bought you with his precious blood jesus christ owns you and therefore that precious body is for the holy spirit and so you are bought with a price huh? so you must glorify god in your body and in your spirit in first corinthians says verse 20 he said that what for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's hallelujah so child of god you must understand that sexual purity it helps you in your journey of life when you come to the book of proverbs chapter 3 proverbs chapter 31 verse number 3 proverbs chapter 31 verse number 3 the bible say give not thy strength unto women nor thy waste which destroyeth kings so you see here see solomon is an experienced man he knew what happened to him if you check the end of solomon you could see that he ended badly obviously there are some people who are saying that solomon did so they are trying to justify their sin solomon had 300 wives over 700 concubines and he ended up in uh in a shrine because of his immorality solomon ended up in a shrine and he, he deviated and from his experience he writes that don't give your strength don't give your strength to women because sex is an energy sexual when you are involved in sex you give your strength you give your energy you give your power you give your virtue you give your wisdom you give your knowledge you give your talent you give your virtues to that woman you see that when you are involved in sex as i explained earlier that your energies are involved your energy of seeing feeling seeing touching hearing all these five energies are involved in sexual are involved in 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 sex so you get to understand that 
when you avail yourself, when you go about fornicating, when you go about sleeping with women, when you go about uh, masturbating, when you go about changing ladies, changing men, doing this, you think that you are enjoying, but automatically you are losing your strength. Automatically, you are losing your focus. Automatically, you are losing a great value. Child of God, don't give your strength to women. If you are married for fine, but if you are not married, don't say, I am a man and therefore I can change women and therefore I can do this. It is my own life. No, when you are doing that, you are destroying your own self. When you are fornicating, you are giving out your strength to women. And the Bible says in Proverbs 31 verse 3 that give not thy strength unto women, nor thy waste which, which destroy kings. So there are some kings, there are some leaders who have become uh, ordinary, who, has be, who have been destroyed because of immorality. There are some leaders who have lost their leadership quality, who have lost their position, who have lost their they are, they, are, they are victory, who have lost uh, their price, mm? who have lost their, their glory, all because of sexual immorality. They are husbands, they are bosses, they are employees, CEOs, uh, leaders who have lost their dignity because of sexual immorality. So, child of God, you have to understand that that's five minute act, sometimes even three minutes. 10 minutes, 1 minute act, 20 minutes act, 6 minutes act. Think about the consequences. Think about the dangers. Just 5 minutes, 1 minute, 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then you are done. And the dangers will be coming. The, the shame, the, 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 the accusation, the guilt, the psychological trauma, the shame that will be following you, the hands pointing on you will be following you, the insults, all these things will be following you because of one act, because of immorality, because you couldn't hold yourself, because you couldn't hold your feelings, you couldn't hold your, your, your willpower. Child of God, don't abuse the devil, don't try to uh, abuse, take responsibility, take responsibility and say no to immorality say no to fornication say no to lust say no to the porn videos say no to the magazines the erotic magazine say no to erotic books say no to the bad videos say no to the secular ungodly music say no to those bad friends child of god and learn to say yes to the word of god whatever i'm teaching you child of god the Lord has given me the wisdom, the revelation, the insight to help you. You can dominate sexual immorality. You can walk in holiness. You can walk in purity. Don't justify immorality. Don't justify immorality. Don't justify fornication. Don't justify adultery. Don't justify gayism. Don't justify lesbianism. Don't, don't justify bestiality. Don't justify immorality. Don't justify oral sex. Don't justify a, 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 a abomination in the sight of God. God created the sexual organs for, for, for something unique. And you are doing oral sex. You are using your mouth in that sexual organ. Common sense does not teach you that way. You use your tongue. You watch these porn videos. It's a deception of the enemy that you are watching on the videos and you are doing that. It's an abomination. It causes cancer. As you are using your tongue to do that, it causes sickness, cancer, all kinds of strange diseases. It puts you to bondages, spiritual bondage into prison, and you don't know all these things. I had a vision where I saw, let me share this vision with you. I had a vision where I saw a certain young man walking and the Lord opened my spiritual eyes and I think I have written that vision in my book I think the book is called uh, Visions of the Night when you get my book 
visions of the night. I've written that vision in that book. Uh, in that vision, I saw a, a young man, a man walking, and then the Lord opened my eyes. I saw about 22 or uh, 30 dogs. They were following this young man in the realm of the spirit, and they were barking at these dogs. They were barking at the man. The dogs were barking at the man. They were following this man. And what I saw in the spiritual realm was that when the dogs bark at this man, the dogs will back away good fortunes, they will back away favor, they will back away blessings. And this young man was just walking freely, but not knowing that these demons, these demons of lust were following him in the forms of dogs. And what I learned in the vision was that this man was involved in immorality, sleeping around with ladies, with people who were not his wives, and because of that, it invited these dogs to follow him in the realm of the spirit. There are some people out there, dogs are following them in the realm of the spirit. Dogs are symbols of lust, and sometimes they stand for loyalty. So you must understand that immorality can cut your life short. Immorality can even limit you in life. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, the Bible says, Whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. So if you are committing adultery, if you are committing fornication, you lack wisdom. You have a lower IQ. You have a lower intelligence quotient. You lack wisdom. You lack knowledge. Any man, any woman involved in adultery, in immorality, in fornication, that person lacks wisdom. That is what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. But whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. So you lack understanding. That is why you are doing that. You lack wisdom. That is why you are fornicating. You lack wisdom. That is why you are involved in this immorality. And the Bible says that he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. You think that you are enjoying, but you are destroying your own soul. You are, you are destroying your soul. The trauma I said, the emotional disturbances, the emotional trauma, the, the, the insecurity, the pain, the troubles, the trial, the afflictions, the demonic afflictions, the demonic oppression, the demonic manipulations, the demonic possessions, and demons, they are very, very wicked. Some demons are very, 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 very wicked. As you are involved in those things, they will be manipulating you, they will be oppressing you, mm? they will be trying to push you, they will be tormenting you in a realm of the spirit. You have no peace, you have no joy, you have no peace of mind all the time. You feel like committing a murder. You feel like committing suicide. You feel like there is no hope for you. All these things are involved in fornication. And the Bible says that he that doeth that, he destroys his own soul. So as you are doing that, you are paving way for the enemy to destroy your soul. As you are doing that, you are destroying your own self. So child of God, don't involve in that sin. In Proverbs 6, verse number 33, so that Proverbs 6, 33, so that a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. So when he gets the Bible, he says that a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. So you see that the danger of fornication, the dishonor, and the wound that you are going to get at the workplace, in the house, in the family, in the church. There are some churches which are broken up because of fornication. The pastor couldn't control himself because of that, his church has broken down. There are many ministries today, they are no more because of fornication, because of adultery. Just one act, just one sinful fornication, just one adultery, and the church has broke up. Just one fornication, and the church has been broken into two. Just one adultery, and the devil will just break into the church, will break into the family to cause confusion, 
to cause disaster, to bring curses, to bring calamity to the churches. So, child of God, think twice when you are about or when you are tempted to involve in fornication. Most often when I am tempted, the Holy Ghost brings me the danger that pastor, my prophet, think about the dangers about it and don't do it. Just a five minute something, a 10 minute something, 20 minutes something and you are gone forever. Child of God, know the dangers, know how you can walk through, know how you can walk in power and I believe that the Holy Ghost will help you. So I will continue on or continue in the episode 2 in the teachings too and I will dive more deeper uh, in more revelation. You can get my book uh, The Mysteries of Sexual Purity and my book titled um, How to Activate the Anointing of Gladness How to Activate the Anointing of Gladness. You can also get my book um, How to Walk and Live in Spirit You can also get my book um, I think uh, The Mysteries of Sex and PBG. I have many many books about this thing and on my article on my blog too I have written several articles on sexual purity when you go to my blog on www.rockofheaven.com when you check um, I think um, sexual purity section I've written over 10 articles on sexual purity and sexual immorality so read the articles and then read the Bible attached to it uh, the Bible is the most important thing. Read the Word of God and as you have time with the Word of God and also have time with the Holy Spirit. Have time with the Holy Ghost, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, build more yourself in worship. Worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. As you are doing that, it will build you in the Lord. It will build your spirit, man. It will empower you to believe you uh, to work in that way. And most often, People who are involved with fornication, most often they get spirit wife and spirit husband uh, and most often it appears in their dream that they have been having sex in their dreams. So most often, uh, sometimes it can also align that way. So sometimes you need deliverance. Sometimes you have to seek deliverance. You can get my uh, teachings, seven master keys to self-deliverance. Sometimes you have to seek for deliverance, but you can also deliver yourself as well. So, I believe this short teaching is going to help you and empower you. If you are hearing me, you have not given your life to Christ Jesus. This is your pastor and your prophets, uh, Diodu Henry Apiagran. Uh, you are going to pray after me. You lift up your right hand and pray this prayer uh, right after me. Declare, Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, I repent of all my sins and I confess Christ Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Holy Spirit, come into my heart, grant me grace and grant me mercies to serve you in these last days. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. If you are freed after me this hour, the Lord has set you free. You are a child of God. Lift, uh, use your right hand touch your forehead let me pray over you right now may the lord deliver you from every demon and every wizard every witch every spirit of lust may the hand of the lord come upon your life right now in jesus christ's name may the power of the holy ghost overshadow you right now i declare and decree that i set you free right now in the name of jesus christ May the fire of the Holy Ghost consume every pit and every chain of the enemy. May the blood of Jesus Christ be a seal over you. I bind every demon of lust, every demon of fornication, every demon of adultery, any demon that haunts you, that pushes you, any incubus or succubus spirit, any spirit husband, spirit wife, I curse that demon. And I dismantle that demon out of your life and I cast that demon to the lake of fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demonic bed, I cast that demon out of your life in the name of Jesus. Be set free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
May the power of the Holy Ghost come upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your freedom, receive grace, receive power, receive joy, receive strength from the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. You are set free, walk in power, walk in favor, and walk in wisdom in this end time in Jesus Christ's name. Shout a big amen. You are free in Jesus' name. So, loved ones, this is your pastor and your prophet, uh, Diodu Henry Apiakran. And I encourage you to check on my blog uh, on www.rockofheaven.com. I have over 450 articles, free articles, over 450 articles, best articles, freely read them and over 50 books freely on the blog. Download them and then share and then read them and then have time with the Word of God. That Jesus Christ is the Christ is the one where you did for and you saw for uh the do henry appear crying christ to ensure on your case here on a man adam in your case here also where yes christ to dealing with may god bless you 